Good morning, everyone. Thanks for taking the opportunity to sign up to this Virgin Money webinar, which is being hosted by TMA. My name is Matt Martin, National Account Manager at Virgin Money. I've worked in the industry for 15 years and in that relatively short period, I've seen a number of changes within our market. This is a great opportunity for me to give you an overview in a number of areas, including hearing not just from me, but also from one of our Virgin Group senior leaders about her business. Hopefully there will be some hints and tips you can take away, not only from myself. We'll start with a look at the combined market. Where have we been? Where are we today? And what do the coming months and years look like? Plus, we'll take a look at some of the key influences within that. As part of that review, we'll take a look at where the challenges are to our business. And by our, I mean lenders and intermediaries alike. But also, we'll take a look at where you can benefit from the opportunities. It would also be wrong of us not to spend some time looking at the current Virgin Money proposition, but also where have we spent time listening to feedback and making improvements. So we'll look at the 2019 development so far. And then to finish, we'll take a look at how else you and your customers benefit from being a Virgin Money partner. And so to start an overview of the market, if I take you back to 2007 and the gross lending picture just before we hit recession and the fallout of the securitization crash in America, you can see that we are still some way off the 360 billion pounds gross lending figure. However, the picture has recovered. We saw flat lending through 2008 to 2011 before the picture started to improve with the introduction of help to buy, funding for lending and lenders starting to increase their product and proposition appetite. It's fair to say the majority of the growth in the market has been driven through the intermediary market with roughly 70% of gross new lending. In fact, in 2018, it was 72% introduced by mortgage brokers. So thank you. It demonstrates that every year we're helping more and more customers. Lenders with direct to customer offerings have remained fairly flat since 2008. Growth in this direct area has potentially been hampered by the mortgage credit directive and branch closures. As a takeaway, though, these direct customer propositions will get stronger with the introduction of better technology for product transfer and remortgage customers and even enhancements in the purchase area. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So the market has steadily risen since 2011 and the market is actually predicted to finish at around 270 billion this year, which even though lower than UK finance's original forecast, 276 billion, still indicates more growth despite a recent surge of regulatory changes. The picture over the last few years has clearly been a positive one. I wonder if that has led any of you to thinking about next year. Are we going to see a similar trend and what is going to impact the market next year? And so I'll show you predictions for gross new lending next year see a step change in that gradual increase. And we're seeing predictions of 249 billion. So the immediate question is why and, and why that reduction? The key reason, and I just want you to think about for a moment your business, which types of products have been sourcing particularly well over recent months and years and which products do customers want based on the economic uncertainty that previously and still does lie ahead? Think about your lending and the types of products you are offering for your customers. And you can see where I'm going with this. In 2016 and before, between 70 and 75% was on a two year fixed rate. Last year, 50% was on a five year fixed rate. This is a significant transition. To put a gross lending stance on it, 66 billion pounds traditionally on a two year has moved to a five year. We already know moving into next year that mortgage maturities are estimated to be around 249 billion. This is 3% down on 2019 and this year. So already we know the market from a maturity point of view will be down, but we'll touch more on that later. This is why it's never been so important to keep in touch with your customers. It will become more difficult next year to keep in touch with customers based on their product finishing. That customer who traditionally would have been part of that 66 billion pounds will now have a rate ending in three or three and a half years as opposed to next year. Think about it like this. Hands up or think about if you've ever leased a car. When you lease a car, if the dealer or individual who leased you the car three or four years ago doesn't keep in touch, do you feel a sense of urgency to rush back to them? If they haven't been in touch, or even if it's just to have a chat or review any other products they might hold with you, would you go back? Or as a customer, do you then think you're more likely to look back at the whole of market, taking into account cost, new entrants, or even utilizing new technology? 
Treat your customers as customers and not commodities. Consider your contact strategy for 2020 and beyond. Consider those tools that TMA offer you, including the Keeping in Touch kit and the customer retention brochure, which give you some handy tips when thinking about keeping in touch with your customers. The great thing about Virgin Money is the support we're able to offer in terms of looking at where the opportunities lie. This is relatively new data, but we really wanted to highlight where the remortgage and product transfer opportunities are in the current market. Clearly, you can see from the graph that the big maturity dates that are imminent are September, October and December. As an ideal, you should be in touch or should have been in touch already with these customers. And by now, you're potentially looking at new lenders and, and rates. Looking ahead and further into next year, the big peaks to start preparing for now are January as a strong start to the year, but the significant peaks in 2020 are April and July. Within these two peaks, the amount of buy-to-let maturity is significantly increased compared to any other period. And on that point, let's have a look at the buy-to-let maturity market in more detail. Before we talk about the buy-to-let maturities and stepping away from this graph for a second, it's worth calling out that tax changes have had an impact on the geographic spread of buy-to-let completions this year. If we look at the period of January to May 18 versus the same period this year, we've seen a significant drop in the east of England and southeast, uh, with drops of 16 and 17 percent respectively. And we've seen London fall by 14 percent in terms of volume of buy-to-let mortgage transactions, whereas Scotland, in comparison, has seen a near 14 percent increase. And in terms of geographic moves, we'll also take a look at house prices shortly. So specifically looking at the buy-to-let maturities market between October this year and September next year, we can see those three peaks we call out in the previous slide. Now, clearly, the monetary value is minimal in comparison to the overall and residential maturity market, but it's still worth calling this out as an opportunity. There are still landlords looking to remortgage and include capital raising for other properties. But the key driver of the buy-to-let market at the moment are rate switches and same balance swaps. Landlords looking for the cheapest and easiest possible route of potentially saving money on their mortgage. And now a bit of an unashamed plug for our same balance swap buy to let remortgage product. We've listened to feedback and in particular feel like we have an excellent product for landlord customers with multiple product properties and portfolios. But we'll talk about that a little later when we talk about proposition. And just to break all of that down a little bit further, I want to talk you through the product transfer market over the last few years, including forecasts for this year. So this is just to give you a bit of a flavour in terms of the size of the prize. What does the year on year opportunity look like? It's fairly widely reported that the market doesn't consistently report product transfer data in amongst those gross new lending stats. That show you. However, these stats are produced by UK Finance to give us a pretty good idea as to the size of the product transfer market since 2015 and including this year's forecast. So whilst this is clearly a growing opportunity, I want to talk to you about how the shape of the product transfer market when comparing direct and intermediary changes. If we look at the split of product transfers submitted by intermediary versus direct, we do see that broker and intermediary percentage split that we talked about at the beginning does drop in favour of direct slightly. And we'll talk a little bit about that now. And this is a fantastic graph at highlighting to you as an intermediary that you really have contributed to the strengthening of the gross new lending shape in the mortgage market. So the left hand side is a really good news story. Customers want to go to a mortgage broker. They want advice. They want to talk about the multitude of products across general insurance, life and critical illness and potentially other wealth products. I want to use this as an opportunity just to contextualise how the direct lender offering are performing and how this might change in the future. As I talked about earlier, direct lenders have struggled with in-branch mortgage sign-ups, potentially because of branch closures, customer pace of life, that type of thing. And there hasn't been a significant reverse uplift from a phone or digital point of view. Customers, as we speak today, don't want to put one of their most precious things in their life, money, in the hands of an app, a website or someone that they haven't built a relationship with. However, this may change, and we've already seen that. If I take you back to product transfers, it will become increasingly simple for a customer to log on to a lender's direct product transfer offering portal and switch to a new rate. This, again, is why it's so important for you to maintain a different type of contact with your customer. It will also become a challenge for banks. Customers will start to compare their bank to the likes of Amazon, YouTube, and Facebook, and if banks don't keep up with the pace of change, allow consumers to trade in a 
simple or digital manner, they could start to lose out. As a summary, though, technology will never take over as the complete answer. We do not believe that it will replace the need for good traditional mortgage advice. But a sensible balance of both will help any business flourish. So I don't want to spend long on this slide at all, mainly because it's, uh, it's quite a complex and, and detailed slide. But what we will do is break this down over a few key regions and look at house price fluctuations. It effectively looks at those house price fluctuations. Um, in blue, you've got Q Q Q4 2018. In red, you've got half to 2018. And in grey, you've got the full year picture for last year. As a general overview, UK house prices appear stable. However, looking regionally, prices are not consistent. Annual house price growth in the UK to Q1 2019 stood at 2.8%, with average house prices of around 230,000. We can see that overall UK house prices have grown annually, but are fluctuating, and that growth slowing. As well as looking at the regional picture, this also gives us an opportunity to look at the shorter term picture. You can see house prices dropping in the six month period to the end of 2018, and also the growth in Q4 2018, sitting at less than half the annual picture. As has been widely reported, London has increased year on year, but slowed recently. This is where the strongest annual house price growth to Q1 2019 can be found, around 13%. If we look elsewhere within the UK, we can see that there are regions where we've seen variations that really buck the UK trend. Places like the North East have seen the weakest growth. In a similar part of the world is also Yorkshire and Humber, where property price fluctuations have been in a downward trend and show no short signs of improvement. By comparison, in particular, compared to London, which has seen the opposite, Scotland has made small gains year on year, but seen large increases more recently. It's seen the strongest quarterly house price growth to Q1 2019 at 9.7%. And what to take from all this? We can't view the UK housing market as a single moving beast. There are opportunities everywhere and they will range from excellent purchase opportunities to focus perhaps just on remortgage. And well worth highlighting that even within the regions around the country, there will be local movements that buck the regional and national picture. And now on a little consumer confidence, how do we feel? So I told my kids yesterday that I'd be talking to you and I needed to help with my slides and look at what they put together for me. And at very short notice, I must say, I'm very impressed. Confidence in finance is a very personal thing. And aside from the graph, I want to give you an overview of what the general consumer confidence shape currently looks like. And generally speaking, we're not in a bad shape at all. This is a regular survey that covers... How do you feel about your personal finances, looking at the last 12 months and the next 12 months? And how do you feel about the overall economy? Again, looking back, looking forward. Consumer confidence on the left-hand scale, 10 points down in terms of uncertainty over the last few years, but it has improved over the last five months. Now, perception of personal financial and general financial have increased year on year. Now, this is predominantly due to the fact that whilst unsecured debt is on the increase, consumers may feel more confident in the ability to pay it because of low interest rates. And if we look at real wage growth on the right-hand scale, we are seeing growth still, albeit down in the last quarter. Now, this is clearly something to keep one eye on moving forward, especially as we can see wage growth has slowed. There will be various factors that have affected consumer confidence, and it's all well and good looking at this from a national and overall picture. But I guess the takeaway is when you see your next customer, how do they feel? What makes them tick? What factors are impacting their life? It's this that will allow you to take those relationships to the next level. And back to the bigger picture and looking ahead. The future is uncertain. A customer is going to feel confident or are they going to feel confident? So now I promised you, you wouldn't just be listening to me. I want to introduce you to Jo Barnett, who is the Executive Director at Virgin Money Giving. She talks about networking, building relationships, and ultimately making better connections. Have a listen and just see if you can take away any of her insight in line with your business and looking forward. I'm Jo Barnett. I'm the Executive Director of Virgin Money Giving. And that is Virgin Money's not-for-profit fundraising business. Just to brag. Uh, we've raised nearly a billion pounds for charity and we're 10 years old this year. 
I don't personally like the idea of networking. Um, I don't like walking into rooms of strangers and not knowing anyone. I don't like walking up to complete strangers, but I do like building relationships and going for coffee with people that I think are either interesting or have something I can learn or could help me in a certain way. Even if I don't really know now how they're going to help me, usually you sort of find out things about people as you spend time with them and you can think about how, how their history or their experience can really help in your business area. That's what I do a lot of. I love meeting my competitors. I've learned over the years you don't actually have to give anything away. Um, I've got a couple of competitors I meet with, just again, just for coffee or uh, just because I give them a call if there's something going on in the industry and think they might have a view that I'd like to just find out about. And most people like sharing. I mean, there isn't anybody who's going what you, through what you're going through in exactly the same way apart from your competitors. So if you get to know them, you can. when there are times when you need to talk to people, you can pick up the phone. So I think networking with your competitors is not a nice to do, it's a have to do. The people that I like who contact me through social media are the people who A, have thought about whether I'm in Facebook or whether I'm in LinkedIn and what my headspace is when I'm actually engaging with that social media and also the people that give you a really tailored contact. So you get random ones that are thrown out to you that have absolutely no understanding of what you do in your professional career and therefore you think why on earth are you contacting me and I just find those rubbish. But the ones that are useful is when they contact me out of the blue they go I've got a, I think you've got a problem I think I can solve it. I think the thing about social media and trying to build a network is not to just be random and throw it out to people but think about what's going to be of interest to that particular individual person and do your homework. So I think business connections are just people that you like. We meet lots of people both in your industry and then outside of your industry. And personally, I just pick up people as I go. I had a dinner with a friend of mine who's very senior at Cancer Research the other day. And you know, you talk about family, friends, and all that kind of stuff, but then we definitely got into what's going on in our sector. And I, I almost inevitably write an email back to my team going, I learned X, Y, and Z last night, because it just comes out in conversation. So, I would never just network in your specialism. You will learn a lot more if you have a broad spectrum of people that you, you network with. Like everyone, you get thousands of industry events and I think you have to re be really discerning in the ones you go to. You'll probably think I'm really outgoing. I hate walking into a room where there's just nobody I know. So I will, but I do it. I don't think many people find it easy actually, you just have to make yourself do it. You have to go into there and you have to look for the other people on their own, because they're always thinking the same as you are, like what am I doing standing here? You don't go and hide in the corner. If I'm there, I'm there with a purpose, I'm there to talk to certain people or learn certain things. So the thing you shouldn't do is go have a really good conversation and just walk away, because what's the point of that? So a business card, which I know sounds naff but it works. Or just, uh, you know, can I meet you for a coffee? Really like what we've been talking about. You shouldn't feel shy about making a more solid contact than just the conversation you have at the time. I follow up almost inevitably after most things I go to. So hopefully you took something away from that video. Uh, we have three more of those um, making their way to you soon. Um, keep an eye out for those via TMA. Um, but hopefully you took something from that. So next, it's really important for us to look at growth. This then gives us a great opportunity to focus our proposition areas um, where we see fit. We listen to your feedback and we really take time to understand where the market and where you and your customers need our support. And we can see from the graph that it's probably in the areas that we do expect. The buy to let, despite its challenges over recent years, first time buyer and remortgage are the key areas to support also. And this trend has continued into 2019. So do expect us to continue supporting these areas. So where does that leave us today in terms of our proposition? Last year we made a significant number of changes to our proposition to enhance the offering to you and your customers in key segments that we've just talked about. So to start, buy to let. We launched our portfolio landlord product which caters for the landlord market but we also made a number of changes within our buy to let proposition that caters for landlords both big and small. This includes enhancing our rental tests. I won't go into too much detail because you have a wide array of lenders and it's impossible for you to remember the stress test that applies to each. But I will highlight our affordability calculator on the website. 
It's a comprehensive tool that will give you the opportunity to check buy to let affordability. And if there is a shortfall, we are a lender that offers top slicing. The calculator will tell you if this option is available. We increase flexibility with our buy to let mortgages by increasing the maximum term to 35 years. Plus, don't forget, we now offer buy to let mortgages to 80% and have a maximum age to 85. I also alluded to our save balance swap earlier. Put simply, if you have a customer who just wants a like for like remortgage but is effectively a landlord with multiple properties, we will not take either you or the customer through the increased underwriting checks and, and stress rates of a portfolio application. Well worth a discussion with your local BDM about this area. On to remortgage, we have a wide range of products available, including a like for like option up to 95%. 90% available for capital raising, and of course, fee-free options, which include free valuation and free legal options. From a new build point of view, we have really tailored our product to cater for this growing sector. We now offer 90% loan to value for new build houses, 75% flats, and have a flexible mortgage offer in, it, in that it's valid for a pretty impressive seven months, with the option to further extend for another seven months. A new credit check and product will be required upon that extension. Another real win is the fact that we also accept 5% cash and unlimited non-cash incentives. And so last but not least, first-time buyers. We support the Help to Buy market, a scheme that has helped many thousands of customers onto the property ladder. We have 95% deals within our core range of products. Plus, to fully support this sector, we have a payment holiday feature that allows customers to take a break from their mortgage payment, which doesn't affect their credit score. Customers accrue a month's payment holiday for every nine months mortgage payments made up to three months. And we also allow some flexibility for customers where there is a gifted deposit not coming from a family member. Please do talk to your local BDM about these areas. Of course, it wouldn't be right of me not to mention interest only, which we do offer on a sale of main residence basis up to 65% and other repayment vehicles we allow up to 75%. So now let's take a look at some of the key areas we've changed more recently and in 2019. First off, there's contractors. We've really simplified our policy requirements. Effectively, we'll treat a contractor as employed if they have a minimum income of 50,000 and if they have 12 months contracting history or have two years employment within the same line of work. This means we'll look at day one contractors, even if self-employed. This then allows us to take the customer's daily rate times five times 46 weeks. Worth noting a few points, the customer must have a minimum of three months remaining on the current contract or at least evidence of a renewal. They must have no more than six weeks between contracts and we will also cap the multiple at 4.49 times. We've recently adjusted our policy to cater for those customers who might have had difficulty with CCJs and defaults. We've essentially relaxed our credit score and now consider a higher level of defaults and CCJs. So we continue to accept defaults totaling no more than 500, but we will now consider the default balances greater than 500, but less than 2000 providing they are settled and were registered over three years ago. So that's defaults. From a CCJ point of view, we will consider all as long as they've now been settled and have a value of less than 500 pounds. The real light here, highlight here is that we will consider these new limits at any loan to value. A big change recently to help in the first time buyer and new build space, we've moved our maximum loan to value limit on shared ownership from 90% of the customer's share to 95%. This is a fantastic addition to our proposition and really will help more customers position themselves on the property ladder without requiring a huge deposit. I talked a little earlier about the introduction of our portfolio product last year. Well, already this year, we're showing how we want to enhance that proposition. We've relaxed portfolio checks and we've increased the maximum loan to value of the portfolio in the background to 75%. We've reduced the aggregate rental coverage requirements to 135 at 5%, and we've removed the speed of growth restrictions, which effectively means there is no limit to the number of properties purchased in the last 12 months. And there's more to come. We're genuinely committed to listening and acting on your feedback. So please do pick up the phone to your local BDM about any product area that I've talked about today and let them know what you think. And so on to some of the other highlights uh, of working in partnership with Virgin Money for you and your customers. 
If I point you first at the dog wearing the medal on the top left hand side of the screen, some of the areas we've touched on a little, but really important, I highlight again, that the four areas that, that really are the foundation of how we run our business and are important commitment to you as our partners. So we have service level agreement, and then there's pretty damn quick. We keep to our words, and you can hopefully see that in respect of our 10 day mortgage offer guarantee, which effectively means that if you send us a fully packaged application, if we don't offer within 10 days, we'll give, give your customer a hundred pounds. There's lip service and then there's dedicated service. If we want to talk to you about an application that you've submitted to obtain further information, we will contact you. Plus not to mention our team of field and telephone based BDMs around the country, giving you help and support when you need it. There's some of our mortgages and then there's all of our mortgages. Put simply, the products we offer our direct customers, we offer you. There's no additional benefit in a customer coming directly to us. It's a level playing field. And then there's sorry, product withdrawn, and there's 24 hours notice. Never will we leave you hanging with a product pool. We promise to give you as much notice as we can. On to the top right hand side, we also offer additional opportunities. Well worth following our Twitter feed and keeping an eye on your emails from us. A great example of this, we regularly um, offer partnership opportunities to play at Old Trafford and to play on the pitch. Now, whilst this might not be everyone's cup of tea, it certainly is the opportunity of a lifetime. And not to mention we offer other things like potential London Marathon places. Down onto the left hand side, rewards. If you take only one thing away from today, it's the Virgin Partnership Discounts. We offer discounts for you and your customers from the Virgin Group on things like flights, trains and experience days because you are a partner with us. If you visit the Virgin Money Intermediaries website for more information or talk through with your local BDM. And then finally, who could forget our lounges and stores? These are great places, not only for customers, but also intermediaries and you to meet customers or even just take a break during a day out at your local high street. Do you speak to your BDM for more information and obtain a lounge pass? So I won't run through these points specifically, but it's well worth taking a couple of minutes to take a look through. In summary, we're in a really good place, but the market will change next year and we will have to evolve with it. Taking some of these points raised as a summary and also taking some of the points that I talked about earlier in the presentation and some of those points raised by Joe in terms of developing some of those connections you have and the conversations you have with your competition and your customers. And please keep close to your local Virgin Money BDM. Ask them any questions in relation to our proposition. You never know where a seemingly impossible new inquiry might take you. Thank you for listening.